I'm Tristan Avakian with Toronto's Come From Away. I'm basically a rock guitarist, but most of my paying work for the last 18 years has been in musical theater. I lost count of how many shows I've done a while ago. I get asked a lot about this by rock guys who want to break in. I can understand why. It's a union gig with benefits unheard of in the rock world. A successful show can run for years. You can really put some money in the bank. There's no loading in, setting up, sound checking, or waiting to get paid. You sleep in your own bed every night if it's a sitting show. And best of all, the number on the check is always the same. Nobody can dick you out of it. You meet rock stars, you get parties thrown for you. A lot of jukebox musicals have a bunch of tunes you know already. Who wouldn't want to do it? Looks like easy money, right? Not so fast, Sparky. Musical theater and rock are, shall we say, strange bedfellows. While there are superficial similarities, scratch the surface, and there are differences. Drastic differences. In this video, I'm going to show you what it takes to create and sustain a career as a theater musician. Buckle up. It's a little more involved than it looks from the outside. This is a conductor, also known as the music director, or MD. He's basically your boss. Think of him as a department head who's responsible for quality control. You are in the music department, which is only one of his responsibilities. He works with the actors singers too, up to 30 of them. He brings both elements of the show together into a cohesive whole, while he plays keyboards and runs the click. In other words, he has a lot on his plate. So you don't want to be some kind of a problem or cause some headaches. If he asks you to do something, do it. Most conductors also have a hand in the hiring process, and they hire guys they know who can deliver. Most of them won't even consider a musician with no conducted experience on his resume. So get a conducted gig. Community theater, summer stock, a local orchestra that does rock stuff, low bread, no bread, anything. For most rock players, conducting's a mystery. Who is this guy and why is he waving his arms around anyway? Well, think of it like this. In a rock band, the drummer counts off and the guitarist usually cues the endings, right? It's kind of like that, only a lot more sophisticated. There are vamps, repeated sections, that can suddenly go to the next section when the conductor gives a cue, a visual signal, sometimes with very little notice. When you see a vamp on your chart, watch the conductor like a hawk for that cue and be ready to go to the next bit. If you miss the cue, you can train wreck. Worst case scenario is, you take everyone with you. Not good. There can be crazy tempo and meter changes. If these come after vamps, once again, little or no warning, and the potential for mayhem intensifies. I was very lucky. My first couple of shows were easy. We were like a glorified bar band. We played the songs from beginning to end with no cues. I gradually worked my way into tougher and tougher shows. The show I'm in now has got more twists and turns than a Formula One race. Here's a clip of my sub Gino during a recent training session, practicing a hectic transition. Guitar change, plus a capo change, straight into a completely exposed intro in a new meter and tempo, and that's not even the craziest one. You are going to be looking back and forth from your instrument to the conductor to the chart, so it helps to develop your peripheral vision. To sum up, as a rock guitarist, you're used to being the leader and calling the shots. That's over. Follow the conductor unquestioningly. If you're a rock guitarist with little or no theater experience, you've probably been hired because you not only sound but look the part. So you're probably going to be on stage. Congratulations. Once again, though, there are parameters. You're going to be working with a choreographer, and you're going to be expected to learn and remember choreography. Stage moves are usually pretty loose in rock. In theater, every movement can be precise and deliberate. If you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, somebody might even get hurt. So stick to the blocking and hit your marks. Do not attract attention to yourself at inappropriate times or you will be spoken to. Also, you might not like your costume, and you might even have a wig. Deal with it. After you're hired, you'll have a few weeks to learn your book. Those are the charts, and hopefully, a recording or a conductor video. Learn it inside out. The chart will probably have some indications of sounds, clean, dirty, delay, chorus, or it might be marked up with patch changes. If that's the case, you might be provided with a pedal board that's already pre-programmed, but you won't get it in advance. 
So what I suggest is that you build a pedal board with your own components to practice with, using the recording as a sonic reference. I use Logic to learn shows. I drag and drop the conductor video right into the environment so I can drop markers at the start of each number and loop tricky sections over and over, and over, and over, and over, and over. Have your shit together well in advance. You're only going to get three rehearsals. Then comes the Sits Probe. It sounds kinky, but it's not. It's a full company review with the cast, the band, the creatives, everybody. This is a joyous occasion. The cats have been working their asses off for a month, six days a week, eight hours a day, usually with nothing but a piano for accompaniment. They're happy to see you. Finally, they get a real band. So enjoy it. It's like a big party. And then you all move into the theater where tech rehearsals start. Within a week of the first tech rehearsal, you're in previews. That means you're in front of an audience. The band is not the focus of tech. It's for lighting, staging, sound, so if you're falling behind and you create a distraction, you're going to hear about it. I don't like those conversations, so I try to show up on day one of rehearsal ready to play a show. You'll probably get notes during the previews and the rehearsals from the MD and or the music supervisor. These are things that they want you to change or improve upon, usually little things. So don't freak out or get self-conscious, just implement them unless you don't understand what they're asking you to do, in which case you ask for clarification. It's very risky to just pretend to understand and then do nothing. If he has to come around again, he might get annoyed, and he has a lot of other responsibilities. He's got a multi-million dollar production on his hands. At any time during this process, global changes can be made, bars cut or added, sections or whole numbers transposed. Write these into your chart. Have pencils and a sharpener handy. When you play the piece again, it could be a day later, you will be expected to remember those changes. If you're the only one who doesn't, it'll be painfully obvious and you'll get heat in front of everybody, so pay attention. A lot of people think I sight read. I don't. I read well enough to prepare in advance, comparing the chart to the recording which is hopefully provided. When the recording and the ink differ, I usually defer to the recording because that's what the creatives are used to hearing. If the discrepancy is obviously a mistake, then favor the ink or the recording, depending on which one sounds better. Use your ear. You're a musician. That's what they're paying you for but learn the figure on the page regardless in case they insist on it. You'll see some chord voicings written out and also slash charts, which is just the chord symbol. Then you're expected to know the idiom and how to voice it. If it's a big band thing, and do your best Freddie Green. If it's bluegrass, open position cowboy chords. If it's metal, power chords. You won't get any tablature. Sometimes Roman numerals indicating fretboard position. That's about it. Reference the recording if there's any doubt. As I said, I don't sight read. I rely heavily on memorization. The book is only there to jog my memory. But a great way to get started in theater is by subbing in. That proves to everyone that you do your homework, you can handle pressure, and you're reliable. So it would help to work on your sight reading. You're not going to want to memorize a show that you get to play once a month, if that. Guys can make a living on Broadway subbing in on five shows at a time, going from one to another all week. You simply can't memorize that amount of material. Here's a chart for the show that I'm doing right now. As you can see, I made my own notes. I even color-coded them with a highlighter pen so I could identify them quickly in the heat of battle. As you can see, this chart is taped up. That's how I can lay out all three pages, which is why I don't have to make this page turn. It would be a little bit hectic otherwise. Occasionally, you'll get to a place where a page turn is impossible. Memorize as much of the next page as necessary. What are these strange letters on your chart? They're dynamic markings. They tell you how loud or soft to play. Understand them and learn how to apply them to your instrument. Sometimes levels on the pedal board are pre-programmed. You can use the guitar's volume pot, a volume pedal, playing dynamics, or all three. On an acoustic guitar, mic distance, playing technique, playing dynamics, are all factors. But however you do it, do it. Consistently, the same way every show. Every single one of those markings is there for a reason. The front of house guy isn't going to do it. He's mixing up to 30 singers and he's running effects, so you're responsible for your own levels. You know how in rock and roll you're quiet in the verse and louder in the chorus? It's kind of like that, only more sophisticated. If you don't understand the reasoning, don't worry about it. Just do the dynamic markings on the chart anyway. The section in question might be underscore. That is to say, under dialogue. Dialogue that's way more important than whatever you're playing. That brings us to the most important dynamic, silence. If there's nothing happening, be quiet. No chatter, no fiddling around, no clunks or bumps. Guitar changes in particular have to be smooth and silent, or you'll disturb the other musicians, the conductor, 
the actors, the audience might even hear you if you're in an open pit or if you're on stage. And if the other instruments around you are mic'd, you could get picked up. Leave your phone in the locker for obvious reasons. Make sure your equipment works. No buzzes, crackles, pops. Unlike in rock and roll, this is completely unacceptable. You might mess up the quietest moment in the show. I know it sounds funny, but if it happens to you, trust me, it ain't. I get asked occasionally, what do you use? <laughs> equipment, I mean. Right now it's this. These are guitars, as you can plainly see. It's my chart on my stand, my wireless packs, conductor video, my own personal mixer so I can dial up my own mix, a small but mighty fractal. This is an on off switch for the acoustic mic, which is here. And expression pedals, AB switch for the wireless. And the most important item in my arsenal, the toolbox. I use the simplest, most effective, most rock solid gear I have. There's a reason Fractal Audio Technologies took over theater. Their products are reliable, flexible, self-contained, and sound great. They've mostly replaced amps and effects boxes because there's no noise. And no tubes, speakers, patch cables, or wall warts, all of which can die unexpectedly at any time. Best of all, after you save a sound, it always comes back the same way, show after show. Whatever you use, make sure it's in good shape and have spares ready at hand for every component. Something will fail eventually, and the best case scenario is this, you fix it before anybody notices. If it happens a lot and you're full of excuses, you'll quickly get tagged as the always something guy. Don't be that guy. The sound department will help you with an emergency, especially if it's their gear. But generally speaking, you are your own tech. Your stuff is your responsibility. I've started scheduling string and battery changes in my phone so I don't forget. And I use Elixir strings because they have to be changed far less often. I choose instruments based on what the book specifies. I listen to the recording and I pick from my own arsenal depending on what I think I'm hearing. I prefer to use noiseless pickups whenever possible. If I do use true single coils, I use them with some kind of dummy coil system, like the Sir Silent Single Coil Backplate. Most theaters are old and have dirty power, whether downtown in a high RF area or both. Your precious boutique single coils might turn your guitar into a goddamn radio antenna. Tuning stability is all important. You might be playing a mic'd acoustic in one section and a blistering stun heavy lead in the next. Lightning fast instrument and capo changes are not at all uncommon, so the last thing you need to do is be worrying about your tuning. If I could start all over, I'd get an Evertune bridge. It does what it says. It keeps the guitar in tune no matter what even with multiple capo changes. At the very least, get the most stable guitars you can and keep them maintained properly. The same social factors apply to musical theater as to any other work situation, really. I like Pete Thorne's videos on this topic especially. It comes down to this. If you want the gig, if you want to stay in the gig, don't be an asshole, or they will get someone else. In musical theater, the show is the star. Everyone and everything else is replaceable. You'll be surrounded by actors, prop people, stage management, wardrobe, choreographers, people that have no understanding appreciation of music as you know it. Their taste may be very different from yours. I once had a choreographer ask me a question about my guitar's arm. He meant the neck. Grin and bear it, and keep in mind that you can't do what they do either. You're probably surrounded by the best of the best. And keep in mind that you're all part of a team, and you're helping create something together that's bigger than any one of you. The main difference is that musical theater is kind of like a small town. People get in each other's business. My advice to you is to steer clear of any personal drama. Another thing that might be new for you as a rock player, you're probably going to be surrounded by musicians that are much better educated than you. Conservatory trained jazz and classical virtuosos. Be humble and respectful. You might learn something. Some of them will break your balls usually horn players. Try not to take it personally, it's just cultural. Rock and roll stole a lot of thunder from jazz, so some of these cats have a chip on their shoulder. And they may be resentful because you didn't go through the same discipline and training to get to where you are. Once again, grin and bear it. Remember, the contractor called you too, so you're there for a reason. And you and Chip are probably pulling the same paycheck. And if you don't have any formal training, that means you're learning on the job. It takes a lot of hard work, balls, and perseverance, so don't let anybody make you feel small, and never forget that. And now, ask yourself how you feel about homosexuality. Musical theater is full of it. It's a cliche because it's true. 
If you're a homophobe, this world is not for you. If you're in the habit of using the word gay to mean stupid or weak, very common in the rock world, break the habit. I mean it. There are a lot of hot women in musical theater. Fit, friendly, fun, libidinous. Depending on the show, they might be dancing in sexy little outfits. Remember, they are working just like you, and no one is there for your amusement. Workplace harassment rules apply. The ideal is perfection, like a record, every time. That's impossible, but what's expected is consistency. The same show, night after night. This presents its own challenges. Your mind will wander, and you might miss a cue or lose your place in the chart, but there are ways to head this off. Sit up straight and lean forward a little bit. This helps keep you alert and in the moment. Try not to think about anything except what's right in front of you and what's coming next. If you do make a mistake, even a bad one, move on. Don't dwell on it or you could make more. A meditation practice helps with this. Also a healthy diet, regular exercise, and enough sleep. And nobody works high, ever. If this doesn't sound very rock and roll to you, you're right, it isn't. You don't like it? This might not be for you. This might all sound a little harsh, but I'm presenting the most extreme scenarios. Every show has its own culture. Some are more relaxed about certain things. Take the temperature, observe, and act accordingly. Relax and enjoy the things you can. I personally have made almost every mistake I described at one time or another, or seen someone else do it. We are artists after all, and we're human. The upside is, you're working along top professionals at the height of their craft. You're telling a story, making thousands of people happy, and you're playing your instrument, and you get to have a few laughs along the way. The camaraderie alone can be worth it. And then there's the paycheck. I've forged many friendships, some of which are deep and lifelong and had incredible experiences. Deepened my discipline and broadened my knowledge and expanded my understanding and appreciation of music far beyond what a typical rock gig has to offer. And for this, I'm profoundly grateful. I can't possibly get more than 20 years of experience into 20 minutes, any more than I can thank everyone who has helped me along the way, either by lending me a hand when I needed one or kicking my ass when that was needed too. I would like to personally thank Bob Foster and Gino Del Sol, who agreed to be in this video, and all the contractors, conductors, musicians, and show people who have been part of my professional life. If you found this interesting or helpful, please hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell next to it to be notified of new videos. Thanks for watching.